You are a Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And hello and welcome into the Braves postcast. Grant McCauley and Jake Mastriani with you after another Braves victory. That is what they did all the way through the month of June. It's what they're doing right here in the month of July. And it's what they do when Max Freed is on the mound. And we got a lot to talk about, a lot of good stuff from a very quick game at the ballpark as the Braves made quick work of the Cardinals, secured their series win with a 3 nothing victory. This, of course, is the Braves postcast, part of the all-new Locked On Sports Atlanta. Make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube and make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast. Jake, more of the same for Max Freed, and I don't know that I can really adequately tell you how great it is to say that because that's how great Max Freed has been. Yeah, he has been. And look, the starting pitching for the Braves has been fantastic. You look at the last week or so, that series in the Reds, the pitching there was just historic in a lot of ways with the strikeouts that were piled up. And then Max Freed, again, just leading the rotation, giving his chance, of, uh, uh, giving his team a chance to win each time out, doing exactly what he needs to do. Like we talked about yesterday, just keep doing what you're doing. And uh, amazing to see what he is doing right now. And again, I think he just continues to improve his case for the NL Cy Young. Yes, he does. He is certainly in the top three or four at the very least on that. And I think Max Freed, he continues to strengthen that all-star case as well. I know there's been a lot of talk about who's going to start that game. I would say Max Freed is in that discussion on top of many other discussions, including the best left-hander in baseball because he has been that good this year. Let's talk about what he did on this night, game number 83 for the Braves and game three out of four in the series against the Cardinals who dropped to 44 and 40 due to the Redbirds. They were shut out on seven hits, no errors, nine men left on base. Braves improved to 49 and 34, three runs, five hits, no errors, three men left aboard. Max Reed picking up that win is now nine and two. Miles uh, Michael is taking the loss, drops to five and seven. AJ Minter picks up the save, his second, and that was a game that lasted two hours and 32 minutes. So I think the baseball gods were smiling after a rain delay that was even longer than that in game one of this series. 36,718 were on hand to see it, and a couple of home runs, a couple of big home runs in this game, Jake. Marcelo Zuna again. His 17th, Eddie Rosario, the first home run of the season for him. Back-to-back shots in the fifth. And as it turned out, that's all Max Freed needed. Yeah, absolutely. And look, I get a lot of questions, and I'm sure you do as well, about Marcelo Zuna and his role and what they're going to do with him. And look, I wish he still hit you know, 250, 260 and was an 800 OPS player. But at least what he's delivering you right now are, are home runs. And you will take that. And that's the way the Braves are winning and you look at it, already three home runs in the month of July. Half of his hits in July are home runs. Four of his last 10 hits are home runs. So when he's hitting the ball, he's hitting it very hard, and he's getting those home runs. And I think you can live with that out of your DH spot. I know with the price tag that the Braves have on him and are going to be, it's going to go up even more in the next two years, you probably want a little bit more. But, you know, he's delivering. He's going with some big home runs in this game. And Eddie Rosario, you mentioned his first home run of the year. Only took 54 at bats and having eye surgery to do so, mm-hmm. but uh, he gets it. And again, Miles Michael is very good. And there were just a couple of mistakes he made, and the Braves' offense made him pay. Both of those home runs were on sliders that were just hung right down the middle. And credit to those two guys who did not miss it. And then, yeah, the back to back doubles that you had in the six with Riley and Travis Darno to just put, get an add on run. More than enough for what the Braves pitching needed on this night. It definitely was. We'll talk a lot about what the Braves got from Max Freed. And, of course, the three relievers have followed him for the shutout. Before we do, though, let me tell you about Coffee AM. They are the sponsor of the Braves postcast, and coffee has never tasted so good. Coffee AM is an Atlanta-based small batch coffee maker. And if you go to coffeeam.com slash locked on today, you can take a look at their full menu of coffees and teas and gift sets. They've got all kinds of stuff over there. That's coffeeam.com slash locked on to find it all. And you can use the coupon locked on to get 15% off your first order. Again, of those coffees, teas, gift sets, whatever you like, you can find it over there. Coffee AM, the best small batch coffee roaster in America. And let's talk about the perhaps best left-handed pitcher in America. And that'd be Max Freed on this night. I thought he was sharp. Six innings of five hit ball, no runs, a walk, and four strikeouts for him. His ERA drops down to 252 on the year. And the Braves, meanwhile, in his last nine starts, they have picked up nine victories. Max has a 185 ERA. And as we said, more of the same. But for Max Freed, it's just the continuing greatness of what he has shown that he can give the Braves since he joined the rotation in 2019 full time. Yeah. And look, he only threw 84 pitches. And a lot of us, you know, in wondering why came out after the game, he right glute tightened up 
on him towards the end of that start, Snicker removing him as a precautionary or for precautionary reasons uh, mm -hmm. to avoid something worse. So, um, but I mean, to be able to go out there, be dealing with that and still just continue to get out uh, just, you know, as a credit to what he's doing, 86.2 mile per hour average X velocity in this game. Interesting. 41% fastballs through a lot more fastballs in this game. Uh, really backed off on the curveballs. His slider, he got five swings and misses on 10 swings against that pitch. So if my math's correct, that's a 50% whiff rate on his slider in this game. Very good. And the Cardinals, as we've seen in this series, don't strike out a lot. Only four strikeouts. Um, they're, they're ninth in the league with the fewest number of strikeouts. So uh, again, just credit to, to Max Freed. And he had traffic in this game. Had runners on base in every inning but one. So had to work a little bit on a hot night. And that's why a lot of people thought maybe he came out a little early there, but you mirror what he and Mike Michaelis did in this game. Michaelis six innings, five hits, one walk, four strikeouts, the exact same as Freed, but Freed able to get that weak contact. Miles Michaelis gave up 11 hard hits in this game compared to just four from Max Freed. So again, very good pitching matchup, but as you said, Max Freed, one of the best in all of baseball and proved it again on this night. He did. The Braves sent three relievers to the mound after Max Freed was taken down after six innings. Darren O'Day took care of the seventh. Jesse Chavez, the eighth. A.J. Minter, the ninth. All of them able to work out of any trouble they found themselves in. And perhaps none was more impressive than the job of escaping the eighth inning that Jesse Chavez did of getting out of a bases loaded jam. So it's not the names you expected from the Braves bullpen getting those high leverage outs. But when guys have been called upon more times than not, and I know the Braves bullpen is not going to be perfect. They're not going to win every game. They're not going to throw shut out ball every time. But if you do, if you go and look at the bullpen ERAs and all of baseball or just the quality relief across baseball, it is hard to get consistency out of your bullpen. And the Braves are in the upper third of that, despite the fact they've been without Tyler Matzik for a long period of time. They have not had Luke Jackson this year. They, they're without Kenley Jansen right now. There have been a lot of changes to the Braves bullpen. And, oh, yeah. Spencer Strider was kind of a nice contributor there, but now he's an even nicer contributor in the rotation. So some things have changed for the Braves and their pitching staff, but they are getting the job done. And, of course, the trade deadline is closer by the day, so perhaps there will be some reinforcements jumping in there as well. And the return of Jansen uh, will boost that, that group as well as the return of Tyler Matzik that we already saw in this series. Now, it's just the second time in 2022 that the Braves have won three games in a row. You might remember the last time because they went on to win 14 in a row to start the month of June, but just kind of one of those crazy, quirky stats about the Braves that, you know, they're not losing a whole bunch of games in a row. They're not winning a whole bunch of games in a row, save that one 14-game winning streak. And now if you go look at the overall record, 49 and 34, 15 games over 500, 14 of that was accomplished to begin the month of June. It's quite uh, quite easy and, and, and quite academic to say, that winning streak turned the Braves' season around. Now, they're not going to pick up any ground on the Mets, who were able to come up with a big late rally and run away with things with the Reds on Wednesday night. But this is what the Braves need to continue to do. They now have themselves in position for a sweep of this series as they win for the third consecutive time over a Cardinals club that came in needing exactly what the Braves have done, and that's to take a series from another good second-place team. This has been a major setback for St. Louis, which hasn't been able to really get anything going against the Braves thus far in this series. It was early offense, winning the first couple of games for the Braves, and now it was just some great pitching by Max Fried in the bullpen that grabbed game three of this series and secured the series victory. Austin Riley in this one, meanwhile, two for three, a double, and a run scored, and Eddie Rosario with his first home run of the season, his third game back, back-to-back -back with Marcelo Zuna. That really gave the Braves all the offense they need, though Riley scored on a Darno double. And the Braves offense tallied three runs and won three to nothing. Let's talk about game four in just a moment. Before we do, I want to remind you to make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. Locked on sports listeners get $50 off a purchase of $500 or more. And this podcast exclusive includes engagement pieces. Use the code locked on. That is code locked on. Every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging so it won't give away what's inside. You can shop stress free and find your forever piece at BlueNile.com today. I mentioned Spencer Strider, and he's going to be the man on the mound in game four. That's a Thursday night tilt against St. Louis. Spencer's four and two, a 287 ERA. Matthew Liberatore is going to get the start for the Redbirds. He's two and one, a 566 mark on paper, Jake, where the game is not played. It would appear that the pitching matchup favors the Braves, who go for a very rare four game sweep. Yeah, and a couple of rookies, too. And I know Liberatore was a big prospect, pitching prospect coming up, and Spencer Strider, not. You know, as well known, but obviously the two have gotten off to different starts to their major league career. But 
Uh, Libertor is a, a very good prospect and top prospect for a reason. You know it's there. He's trying to find his way at the big league level, but certainly a great opportunity for the Braves to pick up a, a four-game series, series sweep, as you saw, as you said. And look, when Spencer Strider goes out there right now, he is he is must-see TV with mm-hmm. what he's done in his last couple of outings. So just excited to see what he can do. I mentioned earlier Cardinals are an offense that don't strike out a ton, and we've seen that again in this series. So interesting to see how they stack up against Spencer Strider, who uh, already has over 90 strikeouts on the season and started the year in the bullpen. So I can't wait to, to watch him pitch. Love every time he goes out there. And again, would, would love to get a four-game sweep over a Cardinals team that, like you said, has aspirations to play in the postseason and go deep in the postseason as well. So it's been a, a very good, challenging matchup for the Braves, and they've already passed the test, and now you're just open to get a little bit more. Yeah, get greedy. Why not? And Spencer Strider has certainly been a guy that can miss some bats, and even if the Cardinals don't like to strike out a lot, I don't think Spencer Strider has really been reading the comment cards that have come in if there have been any complaints about what he's throwing up there because he has been carving up opposing lineups, and he looked great his last time out, and we'll see if he's able to just continue his role and give the Braves that four-game sweep. They've already won the series, but again, why not? Go ahead, get greedy, grab that four-game sweep going into the weekend where you face the Washington Nationals, and we know the New York Mets are lurking in the not-too-distant future to start out next week. But that's something for another edition of the Braves Postcast. This brings us to the end of this one. Great night at the ballpark for the Braves who win 3 to nothing, and they will be going for a sweep in Game 4 of the series. As Spencer Strider takes on Matthew Libertor, 7.20 p.m. Eastern time, first pitch on Thursday night at Truist Park. Again, we appreciate you joining us here on the Braves Postcast. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta on YouTube and to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcasts. For Jake Mastriani, I'm Grant McCauley. We will catch you next time right here on the Braves Postcast. And until then, so long, everyone.